First day back at Frankie's Free Range Meat, and at this point, I expect something crazy to happen every single week. And you guys know, throughout the past year and a half with Frankie's Free Range Meat, it's just been debacle after debacle. More recently, though, we had the crazy contractor just a couple weeks ago. We had our website getting hacked by an inside man a couple weeks ago. And just this week, we had one of the delivery drivers back up the truck into the garage so uh, the context of the day is you know I'm coming down to have a meeting with Adam we're tasting some fish that we might have for you guys and uh, we were downstairs in the basement going over some stuff Frankie boy being the bright boy that he is got some security cameras installed just in the nick of time literally last Saturday and today is Monday last Saturday Two days ago, well, almost a day and a half ago now, we had our security cameras installed, so just in case anything happens, inside and outside, we know what's going on. And me and Adam were sitting down here at our makeshift office with our security cameras, having a meeting, just going over some stuff, and one of our guys came down and said, hey, uh, the garage door was dented. But, you know, that didn't make any sense because how did we not hear it, da, 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 whatever. So, me and Adam, you know, we go upstairs. And when we check the door, you know, completely dented in off the wall compared to the other side, as you guys could see, driven into. As you guys could see from like the street here, you know, it was very difficult for someone to intentionally smash our garage door something very irregular you know it's positioned like two and a half feet off the ground it's it's in it's it's very very far in so since we have the security footage of the delivery driver i'm going to show you guys that Now, I don't know if that driver did that on purpose, and if you guys are asking, well, Frank, why would he do it on purpose? I declined one pallet of product. Now, the guy dropped off two pallets, and it was supposed to be one of something and one of another thing, but it was two of the same product. So, uh, the guy was stuck here waiting 30 minutes while I was trying to figure out the situation with the company that I ordered the product from. You know, did they accidentally send me two of the same instead of one of one, one of another? You know, was there a mix-up? And long story short, the guy had to sit around and he was a little bit pissy and irritated. And then we had to get uh, the pallet back on the truck and we had to send it back. So I, I doubt the guy did it on purpose. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me that he would risk something like that. It, you know, I don't, I don't know. But uh, situation sorted out. So the delivery driver that smash this door in he actually came to deliver the other pallet too he showed up and i'm like oh what what's the deal and he's like no no that wasn't me that wasn't me there's because he's like there's no way he can hit it and i'm like i got i showed him the video and then he realizes he's gonna have to pay for it so he pulls out cash and pays for the entire thing that guy paid for it. He, wait, I gave him the quote from the garage door company. I said it's going to be $530. And he goes to his truck and he pulls out. He only had 430 on him. So he's supposed to show up today with the extra $100. So hold on, I don't get it. This, is, this guy is the delivery driver for the company though. He's not like affiliated with the company. Exactly. Well, but what do they make their delivery drivers pay out of pocket if they make a mistake like that? I said, well, you don't have insurance on your, you're driving a truck, you don't have insurance. He's like, uh, if I tell my boss that I hit your door, he's going to make me pay for it anyway. The problem is I sent it over his head. So I don't know what's going to happen. But so they're going to get back to us anyway. I guess. But uh, we got almost all of it covered in cash, so. Only 530. But that's not a new door, that's just to fix it. What are they gonna just probably... They're gonna take the door, but they're gonna replace the track, new track. Oh, it's just a new track. It's probably a, it's probably a, one of the, probably a hundred dollar piece of metal, and then it's probably, they're probably making Labor. a few hundred bucks on the job. Exactly. 
So I didn't find that out until just now that the guy actually paid Adam up front for the repair. So everything's okay. Uh, we still have to speak to a lawyer in regards to that crooked contractor. We might just try to get on the show, uh, the people's court. I have to file uh, small claims. I got to figure out how to do that in the Bronx. And uh, pertaining to the website hacking, it doesn't look like uh, we're going to get any type of compensation. I think the company was located in Canada, so that makes it very difficult to sue them. But in um, regards to an update, I guess uh, I can show you guys around the facility. Um, uh, from a business perspective, we have a couple things we're trying to do within the next few weeks. Uh, we want to get the Warrior Bar official labeling down and uh, a smaller bar size, as well as selling the Warrior Bar on a separate website so you don't have to order like $100 worth of stuff just to get a Warrior Bar. Uh, we're going to bring the cod liver oil back for you guys because you know we're the only people in the world uh, selling like raw cod liver oil without additives. We're looking to get the pemmican back in. We're trying to find logistically how we can do the dried ground beef. And uh, of course, always on the back burner is, is we are looking for a farm property. Hopefully we find a property, we get a fat loan, and we can build a butcher shop build everything we need to provide you guys with the highest quality animal foods possible. So I went to Harbor Freight uh, last weekend. I spent about $300 on just some tools for myself and I figured for the shop too. Um, I did have some of my own tools, but uh, my dad kind of takes everything and just uh, messes with it and then makes it disorganized and kind of ruins stuff. So I bought my own new tools and I have um, just a cordless drill, a screwdriver set, I have a mechanics tool set. Just like really, really basic stuff. I was gonna get like an impact wrench and an angle grinder too, but I decided not to. I just got a level really cheap, um, some dollies. I didn't see that, that they had dollies here, so I think we need them. Um, but I'm just gonna keep this stuff down here in case we need to use it for various things. You know, so overall expenses for this facility, I think we've spent probably, you know, 60 or $70,000. And that's not really a lot of money considering most businesses usually have to invest several usually have to invest several hundred thousand just to get started and you know we haven't really invested any money we're just net profit basically all of the money we've made so far in Frankie's range meat half of it went into facility and half of it we have in inventory and meat uh, so right now we're at the point where you know we should be able to kind of start actually pulling in revenue seeing what we could do uh, it's time it's time to push on the marketing try to try to get things really rolling and unfortunately you know we've been kind of gated with our sourcing and our access that's why uh, we want to get the farm as soon as possible build our own butcher shop get our own animals being raised and and take things from there that's really going to open up a lot of doors once we get that property once we get that loan we're going to really be able to do everything we want to do right now we're already offering the highest quality meat at a very affordable price. I mean, lower price than every other meat store online. That's how I price our products. I always check and I put it lower than everyone else, regardless of our profit margin. So when we do have the opportunity to move into that new facility, it will be an uncompromised quality. So even though, you know, we're already in a new spot and we're making this work, you know, by no means is this the end goal this is kind of like a stepping stone uh, to where we want to get so hopefully find the farm property within several months uh, we, we can establish everything over there and maybe you know sometime next year we can maybe say goodbye to this Bronx facility but uh, it's it's gonna we're gonna have to make things work here for now and you know however long into the intermediate future what's the what's the game plan we just want people to buy more meat Fire meat. Fire meat. That's ready to great. go. At, at this point, we're ready to go. We weren't saying that last year. This week, uh, I was a bit lazy and I didn't want to do a sale on the meat, so I just decided to give away a uh, beef liver supplement with every single order. I mean, you know, this is over you know, several thousand dollars of my own money worth of stuff, but I don't really care. I mean, I can either wait to sell these or you know, just run a little sale give you guys a product, see if you like it. And that's what I enjoy doing. So that's it for today, guys. Let me know if there's any other products, anything you guys would like to see on our website. Uh, for those of you that haven't been checking, we've added quite a few more cuts. Um, we're gonna bring back the beef belly, the brisket, and the chuck in smaller sizes. We have maybe four or five more steaks 
Uh, you know, we've expanded our beef inventory pretty drastically. We're gonna have the Wagyu ground beef and the burgers back in as well. I'm not really sure if I want to get more pork products in. I'm not really sure if we wanna do uh, more chicken and lamb, if we'll even be able to. Uh, that's the main reason we wanna get the farm because, yeah, right now, I know you guys would probably like some ground lamb, some chicken breast separately. So, you know, there's a bunch of cuts here and there that we can't really get affordably because we're not raising the animals ourselves. Uh, you know, when you go to buy a whole cow, you know, you have to transport it, you have to pay for it. It's, it's a lot of money and the profit margin isn't high. Uh, you know, when you buy chickens, it's, it's already practically butchered. So you're just reselling something and you're not know, really making money on it. So as soon as we get to uh, the farm, we get a couple things up and running, especially the dairy and the eggs. Uh, that's gonna really expand things for us, but e even just right now, uh, we're, we're in this kind of in-between point where we are offering more products than pretty much every other meat purveyor online, or at least a similar amount. It's just we haven't really gotten our name out there that much, uh, which is what we're looking forward to doing over the next uh, month or two. We'll try some advertising stuff, sticking to the theme and integrity that every product that we carry is of pasture quality, of grass fed. Uh, you know, all the pork is corn and soy free, chicken and corn and soy free. And, and what we'll do maybe uh, a week or two from now is we'll show you guys the beef, the pork and the chicken and we'll compare it to other places just so you guys understand what you're actually paying for and, and how the product is supposed to be different from what these American farmers are selling people. And uh, no offense to, well, I actually do want to offend most American farmers, but it's just the marketing used behind most meat companies. They'll say like heritage breed pork or organic chicken, and they're feeding them all the same crap that the supermarket meat is getting, uh, the conventional feedlot stuff. So uh, I don't want to ramble on too much. Uh, trying to stay positive as always. Uh, really excited about uh, the other business ventures as well that I'm going to do. So uh, I feel like I'm putting my... Uh, eggs in too many different baskets or I don't know I have w too many things going on separately as opposed to you know focusing on one thing and expanding it and uh, making it as big as possible but I don't know that's how I've always been that's how I like doing things and uh, we'll see how it goes um, I I've been, feel like I've been saying the same thing for the past two years that I'm really excited how the next few months are gonna go everything seems to keep getting delayed more and more and more and, and things are happening, just not as quickly as I like them to. But we're getting there, we're definitely getting there. Uh, you know, all this stuff is not going like my speed, you know, or Adam's speed. It seems like everyone else is on their own little clock, but that'll be it, so. Thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, we'll see you for tomorrow's video. Uh, if you do wanna check out Frankie's syringe meat, I'll link everything for you guys down below in the description.